Hello everyone, I am Miss J. Welcome to another Minecraft video. Redstone can be confusing, and those of us who understand it often forget that it is actually very confusing for those who don't. So today, we're going to go over absolutely everything that you need to understand about redstone in order to get started making your own redstone projects. So starting at the very most basic level, this is redstone ore. You will find this when you are mining. However, if you break it with a wooden pickaxe, number one, it's going to take forever. Number two, it's not going to actually drop anything when you break it. The same thing applies for a stone pickaxe and for a gold pickaxe. But if you break it with an iron one, it's going to give you this right here, which is redstone dust. Use a diamond pickaxe or a netherite pickaxe and it will do the same. If you take nine pieces of redstone onto a crafting table like so, it will give you a block of redstone. A block of redstone is actually able to produce a powered redstone signal, as you can see here. Now, a redstone signal will travel for 15 blocks. I have a texture pack. You can find a link to it in the description below. It is incredibly helpful for understanding what your redstone is doing. So here we have our powered block, and then you can see this is number 15, although it's not numbered, and then we go 14, 13, etc on down to one. Now if I add redstone over here to this redstone lamp, you can see this redstone lamp will not be powered and that is because we run out of power precisely right here. If I were to add a redstone lamp here at the end of the one on either side of it, you can see that because this line is pointing into the redstone lamp on the very last powered block, it does indeed power it. If we move it back by even one spot, it does not. And because this is running straight into it, you can see that it's powered. Now, the reason this works is because of the way that redstone lamps work. One redstone lamp that's powered will power an adjacent one, but that's besides the point. If I were to come out here, it demonstrates to you two things. Number one, that because this is now pointed into it in off direction, it powers this one, but it also demonstrates that redstone does not care how many blocks to the side it is, it still will only travel for a total of 15. So if I come over here and you see that we have 15, 14, 13, so on, and we wiggle all around to here, now we've gone 15 blocks and we have power, even though it's really close to here, it's traveled a total of 15 blocks in order to get here. Now, in order to continue your redstone signal further than 15 blocks, you'll need what's called a repeater. A repeater, when attached to any part of power redstone, will repeat that signal for an additional 15 blocks. You can also use a comparator in order to continue your redstone signal. However, it will not continue it for 15 like a repeater does. It only continues it for whatever it has going into it when it comes to a redstone signal. So you can see here, we have a two going into the comparator comparator and there is a two coming out of the comparator. If you need to understand more about how comparators work, there's an entire video breaking it down to a very easy to understand level and you should see a link to it popping up right now on the top right corner. So then what are the different ways that we can create power with redstone signal? Number one, you have the redstone block itself. This will create power on any and every side of it. As you can see, we have the redstone lamps and they get powered by touching the block. And you can also power down below, for example, the redstone spot. Redstone torches similarly will create a redstone output on every single side except for the side that it is actually attached to. So you can see here the torch is able to illuminate above and on the sides as I demonstrated, but it is not able to illuminate the block that it is actually attached to. If I were to move this redstone torch off to the side of this block right here, you can see we are powering the redstone lamp that is below it. It is a little bit tricky though, because remember this redstone torch is actually occupying this block space right here and the redstone lamp is actually one block below. What this means is that if you're actually trying to power some redstone from above, you would need to have it be what is actually one block below, although it appears to be two blocks below because you cannot have the redstone sharing the same space as the redstone torch. Levers are a peculiar source of power as they power not only the thing, the block that they are on, but they also power the air essentially beside it. So even though there's no block powering these directly, because the lever is right next to them, it does give it power and the same applies to our buttons. 
Observers are able to create a source of power, although only momentary, when they see something change in the block in front of them. So you can see by adding a block or any other thing in front of this observer, it gives just a momentary pulse when the change occurs. Daylight sensors are able to give red light signals detecting the time of day that they are set to detect. This one, for example, is currently set to detect nighttime, which is why it has a bluish tint to it, and the redstone lamp is not illuminated. If I were to change it to daytime, you can see that now our redstone lamp is powered because this is detecting that it is daytime. If I change it to night and then change my world to night, now you can see with it being midnight, the detector has seen that it is in fact nighttime and it does power the redstone lamp, whereas if I change it back to daytime, it does not. There does seem to be a bug for this, sort of a transition time, whereas right now you can see that it is nighttime and the sun is literally on the verge of being completely gone. And it does not matter if I do daytime or nighttime, it is currently powering this redstone lamp. Now there are a slew of blocks that can create redstone signals based on whether they contain something or something happens to them, but the only way they can do that is by using a comparator. The target block is able to output a redstone signal depending on where it is shot, the centermost part of the block creating the largest signal. When you have any kind of a storage unit, whether it's a hopper, a chest, a trap chest, any of those things, it will detect how many items are inside of it and output it on the comparator. Cauldrons are able to output a signal depending on how much fluid is inside of them. And lecterns are able to output a signal depending on what page the book that's on them is at. So the higher the page, the more of an output that you're going to have. Also, I'd like to note that comparators are able to read the item behind them through an additional block. So whether you're straight up against it, like I am here, or reading it through an additional block, it doesn't matter to the comparator. And as well with comparators, if you have an item inside of an item frame and the comparator is on the opposite side from it, then you can rotate the item in the item frame and change the signal strength of your redstone. This is picky, however, you cannot do it on any side of the block. It has to be on the opposite side that your comparator is on. Using tripwire hooks and string, you're able to create a redstone signal when a player, a mob, or any kind of dropped entity crosses over the string. A detector rail is able to create a redstone signal whenever a cart goes across the detector rail itself. And then we have the various pressure plates. Any pressure plate that is made out of any kind of wood, including the new nether wood, will be able to detect either when something is on it, a living creature, or any kind of a dropped item. Regardless of what is on top of it, it will create a full signal strength of 15. Moving up to stone pressure plates, stone pressure plates will not be able to tell if an item is dropped on top of it, but it will be able to tell if a player or a mob is standing on top of it and it will create a full signal if anything is. The exact same rules as stone plates apply to the blackstone polished pressure plate. It cannot tell if something is dropped on it, but it can tell if a player or a mob has dropped on it, it will create a full strength signal. So in regards to weighted pressure plates, which is the iron pressure plate, what happens is if you just drop one single item on it, it's going to get a signal strength of one, and you can continue with that same signal strength all the way up to a complete 10 stacks of items. So there we have 10 stacks of items. We're still at signal strength of one. Now if I add just one more thing above that, you can see we get a signal strength of two. In similar fashion, when a mob steps on a weighted pressure plate, it will create a signal strength of one as well, all the way up to 10. Now, when we add the 11th creeper here, you can see that we get an additional signal strength and it'll hold that spot until we get up to 20, whereas at 21, it's gonna go up to three. And the same applies for our stacks of items. In regards to the golden pressure plate, it's a little bit more tricky. If I drop an item on it, you can see that we get a signal strength of one. If I drop a different item on top of it, you can see we get a signal strength of two. Dropping a third additional item on it creates a signal strength of three. However, if I were to drop an entire item of the same stack, you can see we only get one single output. Now, if I drop single items onto it, you can see we're momentarily climbing up on the output, but then as the items join in together, it comes back down to a lower signal strength. I don't know if this is intentional behavior or not, but it is the way that it behaves for the time being.
Now, golden pressure plates are a little bit tricky, and I think that they're broken at the current moment. So if I drop an arrow on top of it, we get a strength signal of one. If I drop another one on top of it, we get a temporary signal strength of two, but then it goes back down to one, and it will continue doing that some of the times that I drop it, but other times it will not. In regards to entities, if I drop a creeper on top of it, we get a strength of one. A second creeper creates a signal strength of two. Third makes three, and so on. So then let's talk about how redstone travels and actually interacts with blocks. Here you can see that I have a lever and we have a redstone signal pointed into just a normal block. Now you can see that we are not powering the redstone beneath the block, but we are powering the redstone lamp that is touching the block. That is because we are giving basically what is called a soft power to this block. It is not able to carry the signal on, but it is able to power something that is touching it. For example, if I were to grab a piston and place it on top of this block, we are able to power it but we are not able to carry that power forward into additional blocks as you can see here. Oddly enough, if you take a repeater and you take a repeater on the other side of that block, you are able to pick up that signal from the repeater and continue it on. So note that the redstone here and here are not connected to each other and that is because this is an opaque block. Opaque blocks cut off the path of your redstone whereas transparent ones do not. So here we are running the redstone signal through the glass and continuing it on down to here. Now, although we were able to pick up the redstone signal using a repeater from this block, using glass we are not able to do that and that is because glass does not in any way transfer redstone signals. In regards to transferring redstone signals, half slabs are able to pick up a redstone signal in the upwards direction, as you can see here, but in the downwards direction, they do not. So let's talk about directly powering or strong power. Normally we just call it direct power. If you use a repeater into a solid block, what you are in essence doing is turning that solid block into one of these redstone blocks. So remember from earlier, we had the redstone block and it is able to power anything that is touching it as well as give power below it to redstone signal. So over here, by powering a soft power into this block, we cannot create a redstone signal down here. But if we use a repeater into a block, we are actually able to give redstone power to redstone signal that is below it, as well as take power off of the block itself. Now, if a block is powered by a redstone signal, it will invert a redstone torch that is on top of it. Note that this does not apply to things like repeaters. Although this repeater is powered, it is not able to give power to the block itself. Only the repeater is powered. Doing this is called inverting a torch. So if you ever have a torch that is turned off by a redstone signal, that is called inverting your power signal. Inverting power signals is one of the easiest ways to send a redstone signal in a vertical fashion. So you can see here, our redstone lamp is not on. I have a redstone torch that is powering this block that is depowering this torch, which means that our redstone lamp is off. If I turn the power on, now what I'm doing is inverting this torch, which is leaving this block completely depowered and in a normal state, which means that this redstone torch right here can then power and power this redstone lamp right here. Because Bedrock Edition allows you to pass redstone signals through glass, you can also create an alternating tower of glass just like so. Just remember that you cannot directly power glass like you can solid blocks. Now one thing to remember is that a redstone torch will power the block above it which will then power the redstone beside it. So you can see there is no power anywhere on here, and that's because this has created what is called a burnout torch. If I give power to it right here, you can see that we get some very peculiar behavior that is called a burnout torch. The reason for that is when you initially create this setup, what happens is your redstone torch is powered, which powers this block. Once you add the redstone over to here, what it's going to do is then give a soft power to this block right here, which will then turn this torch off or invert this torch, which releases the power from here, releases the power from here, 
turns the torch back on, and it just creates an infinite loop like that. Although in Bedrock Edition, it will only do it for eight, but will always do it for exactly eight ticks. So if I come over here and I put all of these netherite blocks into here, and then I activate, you'll see we get one, and then we'll get seven more. And there we go. It will always create exactly eight ticks on a burnout torch in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now, revisiting the hard power blocks, you cannot hard power a piece of glass or transparent material, even if you use a repeater in order to do it. But you can do it to both slime and honey blocks. Honey and slime blocks, although technically transparent, are able to pass on redstone signals, and that is what allows us to be able to do flying machines. Anything that is an incomplete block and not a full block is not able to do anything with redstone. Although you may be able to put redstone on top of some of them, they are not able to pass on redstone in the same fashion that glass is not. So that includes things like stairs, scaffolding, walls, stairs again apparently, <laughs> chests, observers, and any of your light blocks, sea lanterns, glowstone, and your shroom lights. Some items will have peculiar interactions, for instance, this dropper. Although the dropper does not pass the redstone signal through, it gets cut off as if it was a full block. It is, however, able to pass a redstone signal through the block itself using hard power. As you can see, putting the repeater into the dropper has caused it to continue that redstone signal through it and power here. So let's talk about some peculiar things in regards to redstone on Bedrock Edition. Number one is that Bedrock Edition does not know how to prioritize its redstone power. So if you see here, we have two sticky pistons and we have redstone signal going into the top one, whereas this one could also be powered by this redstone block. Now, because this block is actually powered, a soft power from this signal right here, once we turn it on, this will be able to be powered. However, we are also powering this one right here through direct redstone signal. So when I turn this on, you'll see the bottom one got powered first that time. If we do it again though, you'll see eventually the top one gets powered. Bedrock Edition does not know how to prioritize whether the signal should power first or the block should power first. So there may be some instances where you will be building something and you will have varying results because Bedrock does not know how to prioritize properly. So Bedrock has an issue as well with timing. Timing is not completely consistent in Bedrock Edition. Here we are giving hard power to this sand block, which will then power this redstone signal, which will give soft power to this right here, which will then power this piston. Once the piston is powered, we're going to be pushing the sand block up, removing our hard power. So I want you to see what happens here. So what happened was for the duration that the repeater is powered, the sand passes the signal through, powers the piston, cuts off, repeats it, okay? So in that case, we got three, but if we watch, that time we only got two. We got a third pulse right here, but it didn't actually power the piston. So the timings of Bedrock Redstone is not always exactly on time. Now, some of you are probably wondering who cares about this anyways. Well, a setup like this is actually used for a pulse shortener. A button gives a long pulse of power, as you can see here. But if you use redstone in order to power this block, power the piston, and then use a repeater in order to pick up the power from the sand block, you'll see that we got a very short pulse of power on our redstone lamp, whereas this block actually got much longer power. Now, obviously, you may not know exactly how to apply all of these things into your redstone builds yet. Maybe you're getting some ideas and maybe everything is not exactly clear, but this is the foundation of understanding redstone in order to be able to build anything in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So hopefully that clears a little bit up for you. If it did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe. But that's it for today, guys. I'm Animus J, and I'll see you next time.